All right, thanks for tuning in. So this is a little tutorial I've put together, just basically going through that classic 90s, late 80s box art style. You know, that airbrushed style. I used to see it a lot in Disney games back in the day. Uh, I thought I'd explore how it was done, you know, back in the day and see how we could translate that to a, a digital style. So, what you're looking at right now is just a, a very quick drawing illustration that I did of Dynamite Heady from the game, Dynamite Heady, oddly enough. Um, everything's flatted, um, line art's done. If you're interested in how to do uh, colour flatting, check out K. Michael Russell. He's got the best tutorials on it. It's where I learned to do it. Um, still might not be great, but yeah, I did this using Medibang, Medibang Paint, I think, on the iPad. So yeah, it's all flatted. I've imported it into Photoshop and we're basically ready to go. So over there you can see I've got my flats layer and above that I've got my line art layer. And like I said, if you're interested, check out K. Michael Russell or Colour with Kurt. Uh, best tutorials on how to do flatten for this sort of style. So what I'm going to show you right now is the airbrush that I'm using. So I'm just making a new document here to show you. So what I'm using is basically a modified, very simple, soft airbrush. But what I've got is a sand texture applied to it. So I just took a photo of some sand that I found on the internet, edited it to make it look like a, a seamless texture, and then just applied it to this soft brush. And I'm using the overlay blending mode, which for me seemed to work the best. If I, I'll, you'll probably see me pop up the depth here so you can see just what sort of effect that it has. So that's it, bumped up to full, but we'll take that down to a more subtle volume. So what that's going to do is when you uh, use the airbrush, you're going to see more of the paper, well the quote unquote paper grain. And the other thing is an airbrush doesn't give out a perfect spray. There's a little bits of splatter, like microscopic splatter that you might see. So this kind of mimics that. And as you keep building it up, you know, using layers upon layers, this grain's going to build up and give this really nice pseudo realistic effect. Okay, so going back over to Heady here. So I'm going to end up using my magic wand tool with anti-aliasing and, excuse me, I don't know how you say this, contiguous? Contiguous? That thing, contiguous. Um, we're going to have that turned off as well, and then we can select a whole colour, hit Ctrl and J, and bring it up to a new layer. Um, what I'm also doing here is just duplicating my flats layer and locking the original just so I don't screw it up. And I'm also going to do the same to my line art at layer because you would be surprised how many times I've coloured in a line art layer by accident. Alright, so what we've got here is just my reference that I'm going to be using, which is the European Dynamite Heady box art. So having a look over it, um, you can see that the base colour for Heady is quite a saturated yellow colour, uh, kind of like a, a golden yellow. Uh, generally, if I'll be doing a painting of this, I would use a fairly desaturated colour kind of towards the middle of this area here. But if you have a look, it's really, really a saturated yellow, or golden yellow. Um, so yeah, I'm assuming that's probably because they got these paint colours directly out of a pot or out of a tube. And I think that's going to be a bit of a trend for everything. We're not going to be mixing the perfect kind of colours, we're going to be getting an estimate. We've got our heady face colour and we're going to pop it onto a new layer. Make sure you lock the alpha so you don't do what I just did there. I'm just going to fill that in. So then what we're going to do is make a new layer and make it a clipping mask and all you do is you hold alt and you hover in between the two layers there and click. That's what makes it uh, into a layer mask. So whatever you paint is only going to go onto basically the opaque pixels in the layer below. So going back to the heady uh, reference there, they use kind of like a darker orange for the first level of shading, so that's what we're going to do. So if we establish that our light source is coming from the top right, we're going to use that when we put our first layer of shadows in. So I'm bumping the size of my airbrush right up there just to basically paint with broad strokes and just get a very, very, very 
a loose idea of what's in shadow and what isn't. And then as we keep going, we're going to bump the size of the airbrush down a little bit. And then what I'm also doing here is just using my lasso tool to select this area of heady so we don't affect the hands or the arms or anything. So I've bumped the brush size down a little bit and we're just kind of going into finer and finer details with the airbrush. Not too fine, just again, broad strokes. And now I'm going to do the same thing with his arms, just isolate that area with the lasso tool. Start large, work down to small. You want to constantly be looking at this as a 3D object. Think about number one, where the light source is coming from, but also a depth idea as well. You want to think what is further away from your eye, what's closer. It's difficult to explain, but the more you do it, the more you'll get an idea. So what I'm going to do here is make another layer and again make that into a clipping mask and I'm going to make my colour a little bit darker. Again, let's look at this reference and it's just sort of like a darker orange. I think it's a little bit less saturated, but of course I've gone for a more saturated thing because why not? It seems to work right. Just play around, see what works well for you. So on this second layer of shading, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make things a little bit more apparent, like what's in the dark, what's not. So you really want to, at this stage, be thinking about what 3D areas of this shape is the light going to be hitting and what areas is it really not going to be hitting. So, you know, underneath Eddie, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie's brow is going to be in the shade. The left hand side of his face is going to be in the shade. That's our left. You can even use this point to start adding a little bit of detail in as well. So again, a little bit of shading in his brow area. And I've zoomed in here, it's still not super apparent, uh, but there is some grain building up. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding another layer on top. Again, adding the clipping mask. And I've selected that yellow color. And what we're gonna do is just go over any areas that I've put in shadow that I feel would actually be in the light. So just fine tuning things a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is select all of these layers together and just hit Control and E to merge them together. Just helps keep things neat. They don't all need to be on their own separate layers if we're happy enough with them. So what we'll do now is select the darkest colour that we have so far and just darken it a little bit more. What we're going to do is focus on some of the more severe areas of shadow, things like cast shadows that would have a bit of a sharper edge. Um, so if you have a look at Hedy's brow area here, because this is above and we've got our light source coming from the top right, then we would have a little bit of uh, a harsh shadow area. So I've just used my lasso tool, just selecting an area and then I've just gone over that area with my airbrush and I've hit Control and H to hide the selection just so I have a better idea of what's going on. Then what we can do is just use the eraser tool also set at an airbrush setting just to soften the edges of the shadow up a little bit if we need to. So I feel like I've got that a little bit too soft so I'm adding another little bit of lasso selection in and adding a bit more of a severe shadow. Again, hitting Control and H just to hide that selection so it doesn't get in the way. The mouth crevice here would definitely have uh, some harsh lighting on it as well. Harsh shadow rather. And again, underneath the mouth slash beak, whatever this thing is, um, that's going to be casting a shadow on the jaw below it. 
So in the original box art, we don't actually see many examples of a harsh cast shadow, but that's mainly due to the weird lighting that they're using. Uh, but if you have a look underneath the bow tie here, there is a bit of a harsh shadow, so it does exist. I'm not just making it up, but you tend to see it more on some box arts versus others. Right, so I'm pretty happy with the way that that's come out. It's not too bad. So I've merged that down and we're gonna make a new layer. Again, add the clipping mask and we're gonna focus on some highlights now. So I've gone for a fairly light golden yellow. I don't know what you would call that. But yeah, we're not going super, super bright so far, but we're going fairly bright because this is gonna be our first pass of bright shading. So the same way we did with our first layer of shadows is we're not going to select anything we're just going to paint with nice fluffy strokes and think about all of the areas where the light is going to hit. Now one of the good things about us being on a separate layer here is that you could say paint over this section of the eyebrow and then switch to your eraser brush and that's sorted. In fact that looks quite good. So all you need to do is just think about reducing the size of the brush again the closer you get to the pinpoint of light. We are going to emphasize that a little bit more, but it's just something to kind of start putting in there now. So I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on the cheek wrinkle that you would imagine would be there if it was a 3D object. Again, you can see it in the actual proper artwork with Dynamite Heady. It's just emphasized, but it's not done with a selection tool, or, you know, a mask as they would have used back in the day. Um, it's just done with a smaller and smaller airbrush head. I don't know how airbrushes, physical airbrushes work. To be honest, that doesn't really matter when we're doing this in digital. We're just making it work however we can. That other box art has a highlight on his lip, so we're going to do the same. So on things that would be curved, or you could imagine would be curved, just think about on this surface which part of the curve would be facing the light source the most, and that's where you want to put the most definite highlight or the brightest point. Now what we're going to do is add another layer and this is going to be our second pass of highlights. So we're going to make it ever so slightly brighter. But if you have a look on Hedy here, there's this kind of harsh outline uh, on his brow and on the left hand side of his face. So what we're going to do is use our lasso tool again. I've got mine bound to S and just loosely select this area that we want to highlight. Just think about what area will be brightest. So once again, I'm bumping my brush size right up and just gently painting over. And I'm hiding my selection again, just so I can kind of see how severe of a highlight I'm adding. Because if you go too hard, it will just look like you've selected an area and that's not what we want. The other thing to remember is the further away from the light source an object is, the smaller this point of light is going to be. And just use your lasso tool like you would a mask. So if you want a little bit of a gradient here, it's the perfect time to use it. So you'll have a severe edge on one side and a nice soft edge on the other. And here what I'm doing is using the combination of the ellipse tool and my lasso tool just to cut out the area where I believe would be still in the shadow. So 
So I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm going to select these layers and merge them together again. You don't have to do this, it's just I find it cleaner and I'm, I'm happy with what I've got, so there's no need to keep everything floating around loose. So I've added another layer here, doing the whole clipping mask thing again, and this is going to be our really bright specular highlights. So it's basically the same thing as before, but our areas of selection are going to be much smaller, which kind of emphasises how bright this point light is. Less really is more here. Only use it at the points that you really feel need a bit of a, a bit of a pop. So I'm pretty happy with this now. So if we go back to our reference, if you have a look, we've got another light source on Hedy. There's one that's pointing directly at him, which you can see reflected in his nose and his brow, but there's also a side light and a backlight. So we've actually got three light sources all together. So that's what we're going to focus on next. And again, you'll see this in all sorts of 90s box art artwork. So we're going to assume that the light source is in a similar position as it is to the reference. So it's going to be on the right hand side, probably a little bit behind Hedy. Wherever's going to illuminate him from the right, basically. So I'm going to select this kind of almondy colour. I'm going to add a new layer. I've already done that there. And set the blending mode to screen. You want to make sure you apply that as a clipping mask as well. I've clearly forgotten to do it, but I can't remember whether I uh, sort that out. So I'm just using my lasso tool to select the edge where I believe this side lighting would be hitting heady. There we go, I've noticed it there. Um, and then just add in a little bit of a highlight to the side. Again, how much you add is really up to you. You want it to be subtle, but also noticeable at the same time. So just selecting every edge where this side light could possibly hit. You can always use your eraser tool afterwards to get rid of any areas that you don't like. So rather than pissing about trying to get the perfect kind of curve here, I'm just using my ellipse tool and I'm going to hit Control, Shift and I to select everything outside of the ellipse that I've made. And once I've positioned that right around his head, that's where I'm going to add my side lighting. Now over here, you're probably not going to get much side lighting at all. But the good thing is about having it on a separate layer is we can add a bit, see how it looks. Yeah, I've, I think that looks okay. It's quite subtle just using my eraser again just to get rid of any bits that I think would actually still be in the shadow. So now what we're going to do is focus on the backlighting. So I'm adding a new layer, doing the whole clipping mask thing again. And I'm setting the blend mode to hard light. Again, K. Michael Russell did a bit of a video on this explaining why he likes hard light so much. I gave it a try and I agree, it's really good. So I've selected a fairly desaturated blue because if you imagine that the sun is your main light, like a point light that's illuminating you directly, then your sky is an ambient light, which is blue. So anything that's not lit by the sun, which is yellow, is going to be lit by the sky, which is blue, which is where this whole backlighting thing comes from. It's kind of complex, but once you do more like real life studies and things like that, you'll see how it works. It's just like you've got multiple light sources at all times. So anyway, what I'm doing with this desaturated blue is just the same way we illuminated everything on the right side that could be hit by the side light. We're now going to go very gently with a softer brush over areas that would be hit by the backlighting. Now, it might not necessarily be a sky that's backlighting heady, but we'll just go with this kind of blue for now because that tends to be the, the case 80% of the time. So now I've got this preliminary soft hard light done. I'm going to do the same thing again, hard light clipping mask layer. 
and I'm just making this blue ever so slightly more saturated and a little bit lighter. So what we're doing is just using our lasso tool to kind of emphasize and reinforce those soft areas that we used the hard light layer for before. And we're just going to do this on every, every side that this backlighting could possibly be touching. And you got to remember over on this left hand side you're going to have more backlighting because it's closer to the backlight. The same way that on the right hand side you're going to have more of the side lighting because it's closer to the side light. So there's one more form of lighting that's not really in the reference but it's good to know about. I'm selecting a linear dodge blending mode here on a new layer, clipping mask, yada yada yada. But I think I end up changing it to screen later on. So if you think about the light source coming from the top right, the light is going to bounce off Hedy's beak here and it's going to bounce all around. But one of the places that it's going to hit is also his brow. So you're kind of getting this yellow light off Hedy's beak that's then hitting onto his eyebrow as well. So we're going to look around the picture for any possible places where that could happen. And we're just going to take like a golden kind of light, select the areas the same way we did with the regular highlights and just add a very subtle highlight. And I think when I do this uh, with a linear dodge, it's just a little bit too intense. So I end up adjusting that later on, but it just adds a little bit of realism to your illustration of a puppet. And with that, that's our yellow layer complete. So I've merged everything down and we're good to continue with the next color and I've decided to go for this red color for his pants. But the process is pretty much exactly the same for every stage of color now. So I'm just gonna fast forward to the next point So with this bow tie, what I've done, to kind of make it look a bit more velvety, I've used more of the soft airbrush versus selecting things with the lasso tool. I do end up going in with the lasso tool eventually, but I just really want that 
velvety, suede whatever that texture is, that kind of look. So again, starting from a nice big brush, going down further and further, just to add more details. So one thing that you'll notice a lot in airbrush art is they just absolutely love chrome and gold things. Um, have a look at the artwork, you know, just example artworks of chrome objects from 90s box art and you'll see that there's basically a lot of harsh gradients. It's hard to explain, it's better to just look and take inspiration. Alright, so that's the colouring done. Um, a good way to check whether you've done a good job is to hide your line art and if things look pretty good without it, you're, you're doing pretty good. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to colour in our line art. This is optional, a lot of things don't do that, but we're going to do it because some of my quote unquote favourite pieces of 90s box art colour their line art in. So what I've done is I've put a clipping mask layer above my line art and we're going to take a similar approach to flatten here. So I'd say the dominant colour is yellow, so I've selected a darker orangey yellow and I've just filled in the whole clipping mask layer. And then what we're going to do is just select each area of colour underneath it. So I tend to find the polygonal lasso tool with your anti-aliasing turned off is the best thing to do here because it can slice through the line art quite well. So just select every big chunk of area of line art that's going to be a different colour. Work from big areas to smaller areas and then just fill them in. Now because we've already pre-selected the area of his brow we can kind of select that again and then just fill in the actual pupil area and it won't affect the brow area.
Okay, so now that's all done, what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer and then we can start selecting chunks of colour. Again, this is another optional, optional step. What you can do is start selecting a slightly lighter colour. Sometimes I'll pick the darkest colour of a patch, like a block of colour, and use that to highlight my lines. But basically, where an actual block of colour is lighter, we're going to use our airbrush again just to make that bit of line art a bit brighter. It just makes things a bit more 3D and it's more 90s, I guess. But yeah, this bit makes a, a whole load of difference, oddly enough. Alright, and with that, we're done. There's a lot of uh, airbrushy kind of tutorials online, but I can't find anything that specifically talks about that 90s airbrush box art style. So this is the closest that I've come to it. Obviously, this is very much open to interpretation. There's probably better ways to do it, um, more realistic ways to do it. But either way, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any feedback or want to know anything else. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Take care and goodbye.